Alright guys, so in this video what I'm going to go over is uh, how to draw a structure in your um, architectural model here. And so up to this point we've gone through um, taking our architectural model we've been giving and putting it into different views and putting it onto the sheets. We've also gone over creating uh, all of our plumbing to different plumbing fixtures and then putting those plumbing drawings on these different sheets. Um, and we've also done details, both structural and plumbing details. Uh, so what we're going to do today, again, is we're going to go over how to draw the structure in this model. Um, so the first thing we have to do is get the correct views. Uh, we currently have architectural views, we have plumbing views. We want to go ahead and we want to make a whole new set of views for our structure. So to start it off, I'm going to copy floor plan level one. And make sure you're not copying the dependent views. We want to copy the, uh, the overall plan, the floor plan level one that's architectural. So we'll right click it. We'll choose to uh, duplicate view, and we're just going to duplicate. We're not going to duplicate it as a dependent or anything. Again, we want to make a whole new set of views for these structural plans. So we'll hit duplicate there. So this will give you this floor plan. Again, it's currently under architectural. We're going to want to switch it to a discipline called coordination. And so we don't want to switch it over to structural, because structural, uh, by Revit's default, is only going to show you the structure, and it won't show you the architecture at all. And so we're going to use a coordination to be able to show multiple different aspects of our, of our drawing, both the architectural and the structural. So we'll switch over to coordination for that. So that'll drop our floor plan into, in, from, in our project browser down to our coordination here. So I'm just going to quickly rename this. Um, I'll just call it level one structure. And we're going to use level one structure as just an overall um, overall view that allows us to see how all of our structure is going together. And then we'll make some different views off of that. That's going to be um, a column plan, um, a column and a framing plan, and then a, uh, a joist plan as well. Okay, so we have our, uh, our floor plan level one structure. We'll do the same thing for level two. So we'll come back over up here. We'll duplicate this view. We'll click here and we'll change this discipline from architect architectural over to coordination. And we'll rename this here as well. Call it level two um, structure. And then we'll do the same thing for the roof here as well. So I'm going to duplicate this view here. Change its discipline over to coordination. And rename it to be roof structure. All right, so we got these three views here. Uh, again, what I said I wanted to do next was then I wanted to go through and I wanted to actually make different plans uh, for your um, your columns. I wanted to make different plans for your framing, and then I wanted you to make different plans for your joists. You guys can see all the different plans I want you guys to create um, in your Revit Projects Part 4 PDF. So obviously for your guys' homework assignment, I want you guys to make all these views for the east. Uh, but for what I'm going to do in this example, I'm going to make it all for the west. So starting with level one here, this is our level one structure. And it's just going to be kind of a, a coordination of everything. It's not going to have any annotations or, or anything like that. And so I'm going to go through and I'm going to crop this view here. And I'm going to just crop it into the west. Again, for your guys' assignment, you will crop it all to the east here. Okay, so I'm going to come down and again, yeah, I'm just going to crop view and I'm going to make my crop region visible. And I can scroll out. And I can take this into the grid line I want to. I'm going to do it to grid line 5 there. Uh, I think we might have also done grid line 6. Just depends. I'll, I'll just move it over to, uh, to 5. Just because I'm only going to be framing these two bays here. Okay, so once I've cropped it, I'm going to make it so my crop region is no longer visible. Okay, so we did this a little bit differently in, cl in class. Instead, we made like a level one structure, and then we made two dependents, east and west. Um, so if we were doing this for real, and we were doing the entire structure of this uh, of this building, that's the steps we would take. We'd do it very similar to how we did here. We had a level one, then we had two dependents. We had a level 1.5, two dependents, level two, two dependents, and so on. Uh, but since I'm only going to do the west on this one, I'm just going to do... Um, 
just make it so that each one is just one floor plan. And you guys can do the same. You guys don't have to go through, make plans and independence. You guys can just go ahead and just make the one views for the east. Again, you guys are only going to be framing the east for your assignment, and you're only going to be turning in those east um, drawings for your, uh, your final submittal. So I'll do this, the same thing with level two here. I'll come down and I'll, uh, I'll crop my view, and I'll drag it in so that comes into uh, grid line five, and uh, then I'll, un I'll make it so my crop range is no longer visible, and I'll do the same thing for my roof here. So for some reason, I'm going to go to visibility graphics. It looks like our grid isn't showing up in our roof, so let's see why that is. Yeah, grids is just unchecked. So let's make sure grids is checked in the roof because we want to be able to see our grids, right? We want to be able to see everything um, and where, where everything is in relation to one another. And that allows me to crop this view a lot easier to go to that grid line five there. So again, we'll crop our view, crop region visible over here in, uh, in properties. Then we'll drag this over to grid line five right there. And then I'll just kind of bring that in a little bit. And then again, I'll make it so my crop region is no longer visible once I'm done with that. Okay, so that is uh, that's really quickly um, just making those different views there. And again, these are the coordination structural views. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to make different views uh, for our column plan. We're going to make different views for our structural framing plans. And then we're going to make different views for our joist plans. So I'm going to start with level one. I'm going to make all the required level one plans that we need off of this view here. Um, and before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to make it so that this uh, is at least close to the visibility settings that we're going to want for these other views. And I'll tell you why I'm going to do that in a second. Um, and it'll, it'll save us a lot of time. So let's start with this view here and let's go through and uh, change its visibility settings. So if you remember from class, we want to go to our visibility graphics. And uh, in, the, in the visibility graphics here, we want to make it so that everything that's not structural uh, that's showing up in our drawing comes through as halftone. And the reason we want to do that is because when we're drawing our structure on our plans, we want to make it so the architecture isn't quite as important anymore and the structure really pops off the page. Uh, so to do that, we'll go through and we'll halftone everything that's going to be showing up in this plan here um, by its model categories. So the first thing we want to do is we'll come to doors, we'll halftone doors. Keep scrolling down here, and the next thing we'll want to do is we'll half tone floors as well. And I'll come back to do transparency in a second. I'm just going to go through half tones for now. So we'll do floors half toned. Keep scrolling down. Um, railings, we'll want to have half toned. Keep scrolling down. Um, stairs, we'll have half tone. And I think just the last one you need then is just walls to be half toned. So that's all the model categories that you'll want to half tone. Then we'll go over to annotation categories and we'll half tone our grid. So we'll scroll down to grids and we'll make that half tone as well. And so a good check just to make sure we got everything half tone, let's hit OK here. And you can see that everything uh, that we have visible is half tone except for our plumbing fixtures, but we're going to address that in just a second. OK, so we've got everything half tone, that looks good. So let's go back to our visibility graphics. And now let's go over to our work sets, and let's make it so we only have the work sets that we want visible visible in this view. So you can see here that uh, we have uh, plumbing fixtures and we have pipes showing up, and we don't want any of that showing up in a structural plan, obviously. So I'm going to check all of them, and I'm just going to I'm going to uh, hide all of them here, and I'll go through one by one and just show which ones I want. So we'll start with architecture. We definitely want to see architecture, so I'll put that to show. I'm working in the west, so I'm going to make it so my beams west is visible. You guys would make it so your beams east is visible. Um, then I'll come through columns west, uh, joists west, and shared levels and grids. We want to see those as well. Oops. Okay. So after I hit OK, that's going to make it so all those plumbing fixtures go away, all that pipe goes away, and we're left with a very basic half-toned drawing. Okay, so the last thing I want to do uh, in this view is I want to make it so my floors and my, uh, my walls are transparent. And the reason I want to make my floors and my walls transparent 
is because when you're drawing structures, you draw it below the floor and you draw it through the walls. And so if we don't make those transparent, you won't be able to see the structure underneath them. So we'll go back to visibility graphics one more time. We'll scroll down to floors and we'll make it so that our floors are transparent. We'll go to 100% transparency, hit OK. Again, that's we'll go to model categories, floors, transparencies right here, override it, change it over to 100%, hit OK. And we'll do the same thing for walls as well. So we'll scroll down to walls, we'll override its transparency here, take it to 100%, hit OK, hit OK. And so again, it's not it's going to look like nothing happened yet, but once we start drawing things, uh, it'll make it so that we'll be able to see through our floors, uh, see through our walls, and see the structure we want to see. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with floor plan level two. I'm going to be able to do it a lot quicker this time. It's just going to be doing the exact same thing we did on the last one. So I'll go back to my visibility graphics, um, and let's scroll down. We'll half tone floors and make those 100% transparent. Keep going down. We got to railings, half tone those. Um, stairs, half tone those. Walls, half tone those. Make those 100% transparent. I think I might have missed one. I'm have to come back to it. Annotation categories will go down to grid. Make those half tone as well. Um, work sets again. We'll select all. Make it so that we hide them all. We want to show architecture. We want to show beams west. We want to show columns west. We want to show joists west. And we want to show our shared levels of grids on this view too. Hit OK. Oh, I forgot the doors. That's what I did. Um, doors, we want half tone as well. OK. So again, it's looking pretty good. We have everything half toned. We made everything transparent. So we're good there. We just got to do it one more time for the roof. Uh, the roof will be a little bit different, so instead of half toning floors, that, or making tra floors transparent, excuse me, instead of making floors transparent, now we're going to want to make it so our roof is transparent. So we'll go to visibility graphics one more time here. Um, we don't have any doors this time or anything like that, so let's just scroll down to roof. Roof's right there. Make those half tone. Make it 100% transparent. Keep scrolling down. And I think that might be all we need for this one. Let's hit OK and see what happens. Okay, so once we made it transparent, we can start seeing some walls through it. So let's go back to our visibility graphics and let's just make sure that walls come through as half tone and 100% uh, transparent. And especially once we change our view depth, uh, we'll probably get to that as well. And uh, I stupidly forgot to half tone grid. So we'll go to annotation, scroll down, and we'll half tone grids as well here. Okay, so again, it's kind of a pain starting out with that, uh, but once you get it down, get the hang of it, and you've done it for your three uh, overall views, once we start duplicating off of these, it'll be a lot quicker. So we'll go back to visibility graphics one more time. We'll go to work sets. I'm going to select all here, and again, we're going to hide everything at first, and then I'll just make it so we show architecture, show beams west, oops, show columns west, uh, show joists west and show shared levels and grids west or not west just shared levels and grids okay hit okay there and we are uh, we're pretty good to go alright so if you guys open up your uh, your PDF for uh, everything you need you'll see that um, you have 3D drawings uh, or just one 3D drawing so we'll get to that in a second so let's worry about the plans. We have a first floor column plan. So let's come back to our level one here. And let's duplicate this view. And this time we're going to duplicate it with detailing. And so once we duplicate it with detailing, you see if you go to your visibility graphics, all of those visibility graphics that you set to make it half tone, to make things transparent, to make certain work sets visible or hidden, all that comes through with it. So it's always a good idea, once you've gotten your three uh, overall structural plans, you can choose to duplicate with detailing, and now it makes it so you don't have to go through your visibility graphics uh, each time to make sure that and, and change all of uh, all your work sets, change all your model category visibilities and everything like that. 
You just have to uh, just have to rename it, and then you can maybe make some quick edits to uh, the works that's visible. Okay, so we're going to rename this, and I'm going to say level one column plan. Okay, and so th since this is just a column plan, the only thing we're going to have to change is if we go to visibility graphics under work sets, we no longer want to see beams, and we no longer want to see joists. So a column plan is just going to show the architecture and the columns. So that's all we care about. We're just going to make it so our column plan just shows architecture and just shows columns. Okay, so we have our column plan. Then we'll want to go and we're going to want to make a second floor column plan. So I'll go to sec level two here and I'll duplicate that view with detailing. Um, so we have level two structure copy. I'm going to rename it here. And I'm going to say this is going to be level two um, column plan. And then again, we just got to quickly change our visibility graphics. We'll just make it just so beams are hidden. And we'll make it so that joists are hidden. Okay. Again, I'm doing all of this before uh, I've drawn this stuff in. But if you guys would prefer to, uh, to make all of these different views after you've drawn everything in, uh, it'll work just as well. Okay, so we have our level two column plan. Uh, we also want a level two structural framing plan. So let's make a new copy of level two structure. Duplicate with detailing. Um, and we're gonna rename this one to be level two framing plan. Or you could call it structural framing plan, just depending on whatever you wanna call it, whatever fits well. And so we'll go to the visibility graphics on this one. And now the only works that we need to turn off is just uh, the joists. So when you're doing a structural framing plan, you still want those columns showing up in your structural framing plan. The reason that we differentiate between a column plan and a structural framing plan is annotation purposes. Uh, if you're trying to annotate your columns and your framing uh, all on the same plan, uh, it can get pretty it can get pretty muddy and pretty uh, pretty difficult to read. For our building, it's not really that big a deal because we have our framing pretty spaced out. We have our columns pretty spaced out. But when you get into some pretty complicated uh, framing, uh, it can be nice to just to have a separate column plan and a separate framing plan. Okay, so we have our framing plan. Then we're just going to need a joist plan, correct? So we'll make a joist plan. So we'll come uh, back to our level two structure. We'll duplicate that level two structure with detailing. And we'll rename this one to level two joist plan. And so in a joist plan, we want to make it so that you can see everything. So technically, your joist plan is going to be identical to this structure plan that we have. Um, and really, you don't need two different views for these. The reason I like having two different views is because I like to have a view that doesn't have any annotations in it. I like working in a view that doesn't have any annotations because when you ha start having annotations, it's pretty hard to click on certain elements. Uh, it's pretty hard to move certain elements. So I think it's nice just to have a view that is solely for working in and doesn't have any annotations. It's not put on any sheets or anything. But again, that's kind of a personal preference thing. Um, so you don't have to do that. Okay, so we have a, a level one column plan. We have a level two column plan, a level two framing plan, a level two joist plan. Uh, now we need a roof uh, joist plan and we need a, or a roof structural framing plan and a roof joist plan. We don't need a column plan for the roof uh, just because I think that would be a little redundant from the uh, second floor column plan. So again, we just need two more roof views here, one for structural framing and one for, uh, for joists. So we'll copy this twice. We'll duplicate view, duplicate with detailing. We'll rename this one to roof um, framing plan. And then we'll make one more duplicate here, duplicate view with detailing. And um, we'll rename this one joist plan. And then in our framing plan, let's just make sure we go to our visibility graphics and we turn our joist work set off in this view. Okay, so while we're at it, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to make every single view that we need. Again, um, I know it can be kind of a pain setting up all your views, but I think it's much easier to get all your views set up and then start drawing. Um, 
because this is probably more than half the battle, is just getting all your views set up and making everything that you need to see uh, be able to be seen, and then you can really easily just fly through drawing everything. It shouldn't take you long at all. Okay, so we have all of our plans. The only thing now, we need a 3D view and we need a section. So let's, uh, let's create our 3D view. Um, and I'm just going to make this 3D view by making a copy of the, our architectural 3D view. So I'll come up to my architecture 3D view, right click it, and I'll just duplicate this view. Just a straight up duplicate. So let's change this discipline, um, and I'm going to change it over to coordination. Uh, the 3D view would work fine in structure, but I think since we already have all of our structural stuff in coordination, might as well leave it all in the same place. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, we can rename this here, and I'm just going to call this uh, 3D structure. Okay, so I'm a little picky with uh, with section boxes and stuff like that. I think they look bad. Um, but if you guys have a bunch of framing in your West, you can use this section box to just not show that stuff and just show your, uh, your East framing, because that's what you guys need to turn in. You don't need to worry about turning in anything in the West framing. Um, so this section box will allow you to kind of move it around and hide that west part of the building. You can see how you can just like lop off certain parts of the building with your section box. But since uh, I'm not um, working in the east and I'm just showing stuff in the west, I'm just going to make it so my section box isn't even visible. Okay, um, so then from here I'm going to go to my visibility graphics and I'm going to go to work sets and I'm going to select all and I'm going to hide everything. And for our 3D, uh, um, 3D drawing, I don't want the architecture to show up for this because I want to have just kind of a 3D representation of what the structure looks like. That's the only thing I want in this view. Um, so for you guys, it'll only be beams east, columns east, and joists east. But obviously, since uh, this example I'm just drawing in the west, I'm just going to show it for the west. So I'll do beams west, columns west, and joists west. Okay, so since I haven't drawn anything in any of those views, this 3D view is just coming up as blank. Uh, but once we start drawing stuff, we can come back to this 3D view and we'll start seeing some stuff come in. Okay, so we have our 3D view. Uh, we also need our section. Um, so if we go to uh, level one column plan here, this is just where I'm going to put my section in. Uh, you can choose wherever you want to put your section though. So I'm going to go to view, and I'm going to make a section. And I'm just going to cut my section through these two bays here, because these are the only two bays I'm going to be drawing in. So I'm just going to take my section from there, and cut it all the way through to that bay there. And then I'm just going to make it so that uh, that view doesn't go too deep. I just need to see, cut through my section, and then get all the way to the columns. And then after that, it doesn't really matter. OK, so you can see down here that our section came in right there. Um, so let's go over here to uh, to discipline, and it's discipline's coordination. That's fine. Uh, let's make it subdiscipline something though. So our subdisciplines are currently uh, 3D views, floor plans, elevations, structural column, which we don't use. Uh, you guys should also have a 500 uh, details uh, if you decide, or depends on how you did it. I did 000 details. You could do 500 details, uh, whatever. I'm going to call this one 600 sections. And again, you guys can call those whatever you want. That's just an organization tool, uh, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to rename my section, and let's rename it here to something like structural section instead of just section one. Section one isn't very representative. OK, so we got structural section. Um, and again, if we go to this view, uh, what we currently have is we have all the architecture showing. Uh, but in the structural section, I want the same, visib uh, same visibility as the 3D view. I only want to see our structure. So if we go to our visibility graphics. We'll come to the work sets of this view. Let's select all and say uh, and say none here or hide. And again, I'm just going to show beams west. I'm just going to show columns west, and then I'm just going to show joists west. Uh, in this one, though, I do also want to show my shared levels and grids. And then while we're at it, let's make it so uh, our annotation categories here in our section. I'm going to make it so my grids are half-toned, and I'm going to make it so my levels are half-toned as well. And again, this is just going to allow us to uh, have that the, the structure really pop off the page. Okay, so that just leaves us with the scope box and uh, 
the grids, and the elevations. And again, if you guys know me, you know that I don't like my crop region visible, so I'm just going to uncheck that box over there so we don't see that box. All right. So I know we've spent a long time working on getting those views done, 25 minutes here. But again, it's worth putting the time in. It's worth getting all these views exactly right. And then drawing the structure is going to fly. All right, so let's start by drawing the columns. We'll go to structure level, uh, structural plan level one to draw these columns. Uh, so what we can do is we'll go to uh, uh, structure here. And we're going to put in columns. So let's go to column. So you can see that this project already had some columns loaded in, but these are all concrete columns and we're going to be doing steel for this course. Um, and if you look back at your detail, you'll notice the, uh, the columns are a, a 14 by 43, right? Yeah, 14 by 43. So let's go ahead and load a 14 by 43 column in. So I'll go to load family. Uh, we want to scroll down to structural columns. We want to do a steel column. We want to do a wide flange column, and then we'll scroll down to the 14 by 43. I know some of you guys said in class that you guys didn't have a 14 by 43. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Just choose the closest size you can to a 14 by 43. So if it's like the 14 by 48, just select that. That's fine. Just make sure you annotate it correctly. So we'll choose a 14 by 43. We'll hit OK. So now that we have that in, uh, you can see that we have uh, the 14 by 43 here. You can see that um, we can start placing it, and again, I'm horrible with work sets, so I don't have my cor uh, correct work set on, so I'm going to hit escape real quick. And then before you start drawing, uh, make sure you set your work set to the correct work set. So I'm working in columns west right now, so I want to make sure I'm in columns west. And now I can go back to column 14 by 43, and I can place it. Um, and like I said in class, I'm not going to be picky about column orientation. Uh, but if you do want to change your orientation, hit spacebar, and that'll flip it around. Uh, I'm going to put all my columns like this, just because that's technically how we're supposed to be doing it, uh, based off our detail. But again, it's not a big deal which way you put it. Okay, so the only thing we have to worry about now is what's happening in the Z direction. Again, we're drawing on a plan right now, and we need to know how high the column goes up and where the column goes down to. So I'm going to say we're going to go to a height. And I'm going to say we're going to go up to the roof level. And so what that means is we're going to put our column on the current level. So that's very important that we're working level one because that's going to put the column on the current level at the base of the current level and it's going to send it up to the roof level. That's why we set height and roof. Okay, so once we've done that, we want to put them at the uh, correct grid intersections. So we want to put one here at, uh, at G2. So we'll click right there, G2. We want to put one here at E2, uh, C2 right here, then we'll put one at C3, E3, G3, and then we'll also put one for these here as well. Again, you guys can check those example drawings to make sure you're putting your columns in the, uh, in the exact right spot. And I think I actually missed these, so I'm going to do them one more time just to make sure I got them right. Okay, so let's go to column, and it's still height roof, good, got that, got that, okay, now they're good. Uh, again, uh, I said this in class really briefly, but um, when we're doing columns and, uh, and structures in Revit, a lot of times you won't worry too much about the architectural stuff, because um, this will get sent back to the architect, and they'll have to worry about framing around the columns. Uh, making sure these columns will fit into the walls where they're supposed to, uh, making sure doors don't get in the way of them, different things like that. So we can just place them where we want to put them and, uh, and not worry too much about how it's intersecting the architecture. Okay, so we have these in here. Now we have our columns in here. So let's just go to our uh, 3D view really quick to see what happened. So in our 3D view, we have these vertical columns here. We'll go to our section. We can see these columns. And this is where we can really see if the columns are correct. So we see that the column's going all the way from level one and goes all the way up to the roof level. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want, so we're good. All right, so we have, uh, we have our columns done. So if we go to our column plan, we want to make sure that we can see them in our column plan here, and we can, so we're good. Uh, one thing we want to do, though, uh, is we want to set our detail level to coarse. 
And the reason we want to do that is because we want this structure to pop off the page even more so than it already is. And if we set our detail level to coarse, we get this really rough, very thick uh, approximation of what these, uh, these shapes will look like. And since we're going through and we're going to annotate everything, this is actually kind of perfect. It allows you to easily look at this drawing and, uh, and see very quickly where these columns are going to be located. Alright, so we have the columns in. If you go to level 2, you'll see the columns there as well. I'm just going to go and quickly change my detail level to course here as well. Uh, if we go to the roof level, we'll just go to like the framing plan. We don't currently see the, uh, the columns, and that's because we sent our columns right up to the roof plan. And, uh, and we're, our roof plan is making it so that our view depth just goes right down to the top of that page. So we'll get into, uh, into view depths here in a second when we start drawing, uh, start drawing framing. Okay, so like we said, in level one, we don't have to worry about drawing any framing because it's slab on grade. Um, so we just need to start doing the framing for level two. So we'll come to level two framing plan. Uh, and again, I'm going to change this, uh, this detail level to coarse so we can see our structure a little bit better. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first change my view range. And the reason I want to change my view range is because we're going to be drawing the structure, uh, the framing for this underneath the floor. And uh, how our view range is currently set up, if we go to it, if we scroll down in properties of the floor plan and go to view range edit, you'll see that it's currently set to zero feet, zero inches. So we want this to go down to negative 18 inches so that we can see below the floor. So that allows us to see the, the, uh, the structure underneath the floor. We'll hit OK there. Um, it's going to make it so you can start seeing some walls underneath um, underneath your, uh, your floor, but that's OK. Also, one other thing is um, I deleted this for your guys' model, but in mine, I still have these concrete beams. Um, so I'm just going to go through and delete those really quick. Shouldn't take me but a second here. Yeah, but hopefully you guys don't have that. If you guys do find any concrete beams throughout the project, I think I got them all. Just uh, just go ahead and delete them if you see them, though. Okay, so now we need to go to uh, Structure, and we're going to start drawing some beams. So we'll go to Beams, and again, you can see that we have a bunch of concrete beams loaded into this project here. Uh, but we don't want concrete beams. We want uh, steel beams. So we're going to go over to Load Family here. And again, this is going to be down under structural framing this time. It's steel. We'll scroll down to our wide flange. So we'll go to wide flange right there at the very bottom. Open that up. And we want to choose two sizes. We want a 16 by 50 and we want a 12 by 26. So we'll, we'll scroll down to 16 by 50. Um, and then if you scroll down to the 12 by 26 and hold control and click it, you can click both at the same time and load them both in. Oops. Yeah, might as well load in the 12 by 22 is all I'm at. Okay, I accidentally clicked that, but it doesn't matter if you load something in that you don't need. You just don't want to load in a whole bunch of stuff you don't need because it'll make the project really big. Uh, so we can hit OK there. So I loaded my different wide flange shapes in. So you can see the different wide flange shapes I loaded in. Um, our 16 by 50s are going to be our girders, and our girders are going to run horizontally. So I'm going to draw my girders first. I'll go back to my 16 by 50s. So let's just make sure uh, we're good in the Z direction here. So we'll look here. We see our placement planes on level two. Uh, we can see that uh, all this stuff is set to uh, set to some Revit defaults. We're not going to worry about any of this stuff here. The only thing we're going to worry about is our Z, ju Z justification and our Z offset value. Um, so if we were working in a real project, we'd have a, a certain floor thickness, and we'd have to worry about that floor thickness um, in our uh, in how we decide where to put these these beams. But we're just going to pretend like we have an infinite, an infinitesimally small uh, a floor, so we can just set our offset to zero. Uh, again, that's not technically how you're supposed to do it, but that, we'll be fine doing that. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape uh, really quick and make sure that I'm in the right work set before I get started. So we want to switch our work set now. We want to switch over to beams because we're going to start drawing beams. Okay, so we'll draw beams here. We'll do a 16 by 50. And when you draw your, your girders or your fill beams, you just want to go from midpoint of column to midpoint of column. And there you go. Midpoint of column, midpoint point of column. It's really easy.
Okay. So there are all the girders, all the 16 by 50s that we'll need. So I'm going to go quickly through, and I'm just going to draw my fill beams as well, which are the 12 by 26s. And they go from here to there, there to there. All right. So I got uh, I got all my framing for level two done. Let's go to our 3D view really quick to see what happened there. So there we go. That's what that framing did. It made it so we had some horizontal beams um, just kind of framing around all of these columns. Okay, so we got that. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to go to my uh, my roof level and I want to do the same thing. So we have a uh, we have our level two framing plan done. Let's go to our uh, our roof framing plan. So floor plan, roof framing plan right here. Um, so we're going to have to edit our, our view range here again as well. So we'll go to edit view range. We'll make a, it go down to negative 18 inches. Negative 18 inches. Hit OK. And again, since we dropped it down to 18 inches, it's going to make it so that we can now see our, uh, our floors underneath, which is fine. Okay, so we have this, so let's go through and let's draw all the beams for this one as well. Again, 16 by 50s for the girders, 12 by 26s for the fill beams. So go to beam, oops, cancel, cancel, escape, we'll go to beam, 16 by 50s. Huh, that's weird. I might have not line those up perfectly, but that should be okay. Yeah, I think I'm fine. I think I just didn't, when I was putting these in, didn't have them lined up absolutely perfectly, but I think Revit's okay with that. Um, it's not too big of a deal. So I'm going to keep going here and keep doing my 16 by 50s across here and across here. All right, now we'll go through and we'll put our beams that are going to be 12 by 26s, and we'll draw those vertically. All right, cool. Let's go back to our 3D view really quick to see what happened. So that just made it so we have girders and fill beams up on the roof level. So it's looking pretty good. We look like we have a pretty good structure going on right now. Uh, so lots we need to do is we need to put our joists in. So uh, we're, we're good with our framing plans, we're good with our column plans. Now let's go to level two joist plan and uh, let's put our joists in. And so the first thing we need to do with our joist plan is again scroll down. We need to change our view range. So in our joist plan we want to make it so we are at a uh, negative 18 inches and negative 18 inches. And then I also want to make it so my detail level is set to course. All right, so currently it looks pretty much identical to the framing plan, uh, but this is where we're going to draw our joists in. And then once we draw the joists in, we'll go back and check our framing plan out, and you'll see that these joists don't show up in our framing plan. Okay, so to make the joists, we need to load in one more thing. Um, so we'll go to Insert, and we'll go to Load Family. And we need to load in our joist size, which is a 12K5. So we'll scroll all the way down to um, structural framing again. We'll go to steel. Um, and we're going to do a K-series bar joist. I'm going to choose angle web. Um, I don't think it really matters which one you choose. I think it'll all annotate the same and look pretty much identical. But let's just go ahead and use an angle web. So we'll hit open on that. And we want to choose a 12K5. We'll hit OK. All right, so like I said in class, uh, we'll have a bit of an issue using the automatic um, assignment for uh, for drawing these uh, these these joists, and I'll get to that in a second here when we do it. Um, but the trick I'm going to do is I'm going to just hide all of my walls in my view just for a little bit, so I can go in and I can select the fill beams to put in the uh, the joists using the automatic technique rather than drawing the uh, the area out. So um, 
So before we get to that, though, let's go and let's change our work set. We'll change it over to uh, Joyce West. And then, okay, we'll go over to Structure, and we'll go to uh, Beam System this time. We don't want to have to draw every single joist individually. Instead, we can make a quick Beam System and let Revit do it for us. So we'll do Beam System. Oops, sorry. Again, I said it and I didn't do it. Uh, let's go back to our Visibility Graphics, and we'll quickly hide the walls. Again, this is just temporary. We're going to bring them back. We're just going to hide them for the time being so we can draw in our uh, Beam System. All right, so we have our walls hidden. We can now go to Beam System, making sure we're in our joist work set. Oh, so this allows us to do the quick, easy, automatic beam system. Oh, we want to use our 12K5s we loaded in, so make sure you have 12K5 selected. We want our justification on center. We want our layout to be two feet, because that's how we did the detail, right? Um, and then you can see everything else is, uh, is good. So now you can come in, and if you click your girders, it'll make it so you orient it left to right. If you click your fill beams, it'll orient it up and down. So it, you just pretty much have to click whichever beam is, uh, is parallel to these. So we'll click there. And it takes a second, but it'll get it in for you. Then we'll just hover over here until we get the, uh, get the uh, joist that we want. We'll click there. Do the same thing here. Click there. And do the same thing here. Click there. Okay, so we'll hit escape here, and I'll go back to my visibility graphics, and I'm going to turn my walls back on now. All right, cool. So we've got that one done. Let's go up to our floor plan uh, roof joist plan. Um, and let's start off by first changing our view range. We'll take send that down to negative 18 inches. Send that down to negative 18 inches. Hit OK. So we can now see our framing coming through, and we want to go through, we want to put our joists in. So we're going to want to do the same thing here as well. We'll go to our visibility graphics. We'll quickly hide our walls just so we can put these, uh, put these beam systems in. We make sure that joists is our active work set. We'll go to beam system, and it should have saved your, uh, your stuff from last time. So you still have the 12K5, you still have center, fixed distance of two feet. That's all good. We'll go through, and we'll click our different bays that we want these to be put into. Awesome. So we can just hit escape to be done. We'll go back to our visibility graphics and we'll make sure that our walls are now appearing again. All right. So again, setting the views up was probably more than half of the work that we just did there. Uh, but now that we have it done, uh, let's go to our, uh, our 3D view really quickly and just see what it's looking like. So there we go. That's our completed structure for two bays here. We have, uh, we have our joists coming out like that. We have our girders going across, our fill beams going there, our columns going up and down. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's go to our structural section really quick. Um, so our structural section, it's the only view that we don't want our detail level to be coarse. Um, and with the structural section, we just want to set it to fine, um, just so it looks more of an actual section. So we'll come over here, we'll hit that, and we'll say we want it to be fine. And now we're looking more like an actual uh, actual structure cutting through it, and we can go through and we can annotate it. All right, so now that we've done this, the uh, the last thing we need to do, besides just putting everything onto a sheet, which uh, you guys should be pretty good at by now, and I won't go over in this video, is we want to go through and we want to annotate our drawings. So if we go through, we can see that column plan is just showing columns. Uh, level 2 column plan still just showing columns. Level 2 framing plan is just showing columns and fill beams and girders. Level 2 joist plan is then showing everything, uh, and so on. So the reason we made all these different is because we want to have them annotated differently. So let's start out with level 1 column plan, and we're going to annotate all of our columns. So if we go to annotate, you should be able to go to tag all right here. And if you go to tag all, you can scroll down, and you can go to structural column tags. So currently, uh, you have two options for structural column tags loaded into this project. Uh, it's either a straight up structural column tag or it's a structural column tag uh, oriented at a 45 degree angle. Uh, you guys can choose whichever one you want to. I'm just going to do the one that is, uh, that's horizontal. Okay, so after that you can choose if you want a leader or not. I don't like having leaders on these so I'm going to say no to the leader. 
Um, and then once I hit OK, you'll see that it, it, uh, it annotated every single one of my columns. Unfortunately, Revit's a little annoying with how it throws in its annotations, and it puts the annotations right on top of the element. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight everything here, and then I can go to Filter, and I can just check nothing, and just check my structural column tags here. So that allows me to have all of my structural column tags highlighted at once, and then I can just kind of use the arrow keys to move them up a little bit so they're not right on, right on top of the, uh, the columns. And then once I have it like that, since the walls are halftone and everything, it should be able to read just fine on top of it. All right, so that's how you, that's how you tag your columns. It's as easy as that. Uh, the other alternative is to do tag by category and then click each one individually. I think the tag all command is a lot nicer, though. Okay, so we've done that for the column plan. We'll go over to level two framing plan. And we want to tag all of our girders and our fill beams. We don't want to worry about tagging the columns in these views anymore, though, uh, because the columns were already tagged in our column plan. That was the whole point of having these two as different plans. And so I guess I should probably tag them in the column plan level two as well. We tagged them in column plan level one. So let's just go to column plan level two and quickly tag everything here. So I'll go to tag all. Again, we'll scroll down. Structural columns. I'm going to make it so we do it with just a straight up column tag. Hit OK. Again, just kind of highlight everything, filter, check none, structural column tags, and I'll move those column tags up a little bit. All right, so let's go to framing plan, and it's the same uh, same procedure. We'll go to tag all, scroll down to uh, this time structural framing tags, and uh, if we hit the drop down there, uh, this is going to show you a whole bunch of different ones, and if we scroll up, all we want to do is just a very standard one. So we'll just do structural framing tags standard. Again, there's a whole bunch of different ones loaded into this project, but let's just worry about doing structural framing tags standard. Hit OK. And Revit's pretty nice with doing framing tags. It'll just throw them in, and those already look pretty good. We don't have to worry about editing those at all. So we'll go to joist plan. Um, and so the annotation for our joist plan is a little bit different. Now we're not going to go through and we're not going to tag every single one in this view. Instead, we're going to make a beam system tag. So to do that, that's under the annotate tab and it's all the way to the far right here that shows beam system symbol. We'll click that. And now if we click one of these, uh, these bays, you can see that it's going to give us this right here. And so we'll just click right in the middle there. And what this says is throughout this entire bay, we have 12K5 joists at a spacing of two feet. So that's all that says, and that's all we need is that information. So we can just go through, we can just keep clicking, um, and we can line it up nicely with the, uh, the other one, it'll give you extensions. We we'll want to click this one as well, and click this one as well. Should be able to get extensions for, uh, for everything here. Come on, there we go. All right, so yeah, tagging your joys plan is, is as simple as that. Okay, so we have those two done, and uh, tagging the roof is going to be the same procedure there. All right, so the only thing I've, uh, I've left out in this is if you look at your, uh, your example PDF, is you guys are going to have to worry about um, drawing the, uh, the structure that supports this overhang, and that's going to be done with a series of cantilevered beams. And you can do that with a beam system. Uh, just make sure that when you do your beam system, I guess I'll, I'll show you one bit here real quick. So if we go to structure, we want to make a beam system. These cantilevers are no longer uh, a 12K5. Now we're going to change those over to the uh, 12 by 26s. And now we can't automatically select the beam system because we don't have uh, we don't have the bay to be able to click. So instead we're going to have to sketch the beam system ourselves. So we'll do sketch beam system. Um, so then we're just going to draw out very quick, quickly where we want to. Uh, to, to draw this, this out. And so I'm going to take it from the center line of my column. I'm going to bring it all the way out to here. Then I'm going to say that we're going to draw it all the way over to there. I'm going to bring it up. And then I'll just close it up right there. So again, we're making a beam system for the cantilevers here. Um, and I think I, I tell you guys to make the cantilevers at a, at a four foot spacing. So I'm going to change my fixed spacing from two feet to four feet on this one. Uh, again, justification centered. This time, though, we did change our beam type to the wide flange. Uh, make sure our beam direction is correct by looking at our two little lines. 
our beams will be parallel to those lines. So we'll want to make sure our beam direction is set correctly. If it isn't, we can click beam direction and choose that line to make sure it is. So once you've done that, we'll hit the check mark. And that'll bring in these 12 by 26s here. Uh, instead of uh, actually having the 12 by 26s like this, uh, I think I, I annotate it such that uh, we have the beam system. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to, uh, to delete these annotations out. And instead I'm going to do a beam system tab under annotate and show that it's a 12 by 26 at 4 feet. You notice the beam system was a little annoying in that it didn't put a, a beam right there for us. So we're just going to have to draw that ourselves. So if we go to structure, we can go to beam, quickly choose a uh, 12 by 26 right here and we'll draw it from there to the edge and we'll draw it from there to the edge. Alright, so let's quickly go to our 3D view and we can see now we have those, those beams cantilevered out right there. Alright, so that should, uh, that should get you guys going and, uh, and help you all out with the, uh, the part four of the uh, Revit project. Uh, we'll be going over doing the annotations and, um, and getting all your views set up and everything in the next class period. Um, but that should, uh, that should get you guys going. And then the only thing left we have to do is make schedules. And we'll go over, I'll make another video for that uh, after Thursday's class.